Let's pray. My Lord God in heaven, please forgive us our sins. Send us the Holy Spirit today through the church, Lord, and give us great understanding of your word. For the Lord Jesus be praised. Amen. Amen. So, the sermon today is the stumbling stone. There's a lot of people coughing, I know. It was, everyone's coughing. <laughs> we'll pray for some healing as well. Then. Okay, uh, let's do that before we start, otherwise it'll be on our minds. Lord, I ask for healing for those watching, for those in our family, for the people around the world, Lord. Lord, give us natural cures to the things that we have and take away these sicknesses. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, the stumbling stone. The Bible says, wherefore, before, uh, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone. Now, a stumbling stone is something you trip over, okay? It's a stone that's put there to... Are you not all right? Okay. And a rock of offence. Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Turn off the toy, Joe, otherwise he'll make noise. Give him something else. Okay. So. Right. Back to the sermon. Okay, so, the thing that tripped up the Jewish people was this, okay? They stumbled at that stumbling stone. They saw it not by faith, okay? It was something that trips a lot of people up. It's there, put there deliberately, I lay a stumbling stone. I'm putting something, okay, that will cause offence, something that will turn people against God. And what is that? That they don't believe in Jesus, and that's what it was. So let's go to the next one. Did it work? Brilliant. Okay. So the Bible says, Hold thy, pray, thy peace at the presence of the Lord God. For the day of the Lord is at hand. For the, um, for the Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has bid his guests. I've sent out my invites. I've prepared the sacrifice, Jesus. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. Now, do we see people today strange in clo uh, clothed in strange apparel? Men dressed as women, people dressed up in goats' heads and things for parties, wizards, because, you know, children are told that wizards are good things, okay? It doesn't matter if, if you don't see something as wrong. It matters if God sees something as wrong. Now, he is God. It's nice for people to say, oh, God, that God won't mind this and he won't mind that. He will. If you see a man dressed as a woman, it bothers God. Okay? It's also, uh, the, the other meaning is this, that they're not, their clothes aren't washed properly. They haven't got rid of their sins. This is strange apparel. It's stuff that uh, they're not wearing what they should be. So let's go to the next one. Okay. It also says, the same day also will I punish all those that leap upon the threshold, which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. Now, what do we see? We see Disney here. They filled their master's houses with deceit. They want more gay characters. More gay in their cartoons. They want, they're, they're, they're people that have, they work, they get jobs, these 
alphabet soup people, they get jobs high up and they pervert the things coming out of that company so that they can push their agenda. They get jobs in government, they get jobs. Okay, you see here, they've reinstalled a gay kiss in Toy Story. It's disgusting, right? We can't watch this stuff anymore. Sorry? It was your favorite? Oh, no. They ruined your favorite. They ruined your favorite. The Disney executive vowed more inclusivity. That means put gay people in as many times as you can. It doesn't mean being inclusive at all. Okay? Account. So they want 50% of their people in cartoons have got to be gay. Now, if it's a cartoon, does anybody think about sexual orientation? Have you ever watched a cartoon and think, I wonder if they're gay? No, have you? no one's ever thought that, right? What happens? <laughs> These people decide, because in cartoons, children don't think about things like this. They're just trying to watch a nice film, you know, well, used to anyway. Okay? So, she says she's the mother of two queer children. A transgender and a pansexual. So, this is what she is. I mean, she's decided that all children should be like her children. Queer and transsexual and things like that. So, she's decided that. Okay? And what happened? Disney has lost more than 10 billion, $10 billion, they've lost it. Now imagine you're losing 10 billion, 10 million, okay, 10 billion, and people keep, nobody wants to watch this, we're not alone, nobody wants to watch these sick perverted things, but the workers that have got in there have decided that this is what they want. They've decided that this is the most important thing, message to give to children, okay, and what happens? Nobody wants it. We reject it. You're pushing that stuff. And where you didn't have hate before, they're festering this hate now. I watched, um, I was watching this James Bond, and the latest James Bond has been replaced by a black woman. And I was sitting there thinking, there's nothing wrong with black women. <laughs> they're fantastic. But why didn't you make her 004 or 005? Why didn't you make her a special agent? of No. No. You have to replace all the male heroes with women, so there's no more male heroes. They've done it in Star Wars, they've done it in Marvel, they've done it... Men are rubbish now. <laughs> women are... There's only women heroes. And it's really obvious. Now, the Bible says, the vision of Obadiah, let's say the Lord concerning Edom, okay? We've heard the rumour from the Lord, an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise you. Let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I've made thee small concerning the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Now, who is Edom? I'll show you. But first, what does God say to do? Rise up and fight against these things. Now, they tried it with this. They're trying to pervert all the programs, but there's been a kickback. They tried to do the Hallmark Channel. Has anyone ever watched this Hallmark Channel? And it's all nice and it's always the same story. Romantic people falling in love and stuff like that. They're trying to make it uh, queer now. So what they've done is the people left Hallmark Channel and made a Christian channel and said we're, we add, we're promoting Christian values. That show went from 10 million to 200 million. They're, they're making money and they're growing and growing, growing. So what it is, is they thought that they could get away. But people rose up and, and did battle. Just like we have to. We have to get people in the schools, parents. All the material must be approved by the parents and things like that. And that way you can protect children. Okay? Now... Watch. The pride of thine heart has deceived thee. Have you ever noticed people are proud that they're evil sometimes? They're not just unrepentant. They're just blatantly evil and they don't care. 
they're, it's as if they're, they're, they have this pride in them that if we're proud of it, it's not evil anymore. No, it still is. Thou that dwellest in the cliffs of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. You see, the way to bring people down, God lets them rise and rise. Evil people, they get more and more and more popular until God brings them down. And that's what God does. Sometimes people, it's the height of their pride where God gets them. So that everybody can see these people fall. It's genius. Because people see, if you make an example, like a Pharaoh. With Pharaoh, you saw that God said, I've raised you up so that I can show my power. So it's not that Pharaoh was very clever and got away with it all those years. God allowed him to get to a certain position so that he could basically humiliate him in front of everyone. Now, humiliation is a rough word to use, but it was the best way to describe showing an evil person at the height of their power falling. No matter what he did, he couldn't beat God. And it worked. Let's go to the next one. Wait, I'll use my clicker. Yes, it works. Now, Who is Edom? Remember there were two brothers, okay? Okay, watch this. Uh, it's Esau and Jacob. Now Esau was a uh, reddish color because he used to um, he used to like his brother's suit, which was red. It was lentils and stuff. So they called him Edom, okay? So Esau and his children were called the Edomites. Now, which one appeals more? Okay, Esau was a cunning hunter, you know, action guy, tough guy. Okay, a man of the field. Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. Which one appeals to? You know, I mean, which one would you rather be? You know, the, the, the hunter, the strong guy. Let's see what happens. Isaac loved Esau, the tough son. You know, the hunter's son, because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob, the other son. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. The father loved the hunter, but God didn't. Now, why is that? Why didn't he like this tough guy type? Well, you see, there's two types of tough. There's tough on the outside, your body, and there's tough inside. One of these is cleverer. One of these is tougher. And it's not the hunter guy. Watch what happens when temptation comes. Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom, because it was red, red pottage. Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. Now a test has come. The test is, will you sell out when you're hungry? Will you sell out what's given to you when times are tough? That's the message here. And what happened? Okay. Yeah, I was feeling faint. So he's hungry for one day and he's willing to sell out everything. Because he was hungry for one day. I'll happily sell out. Watch. And Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point to die. What profit shall this birthright do to me? When we feel faint, right? We want to sell out God, don't we? Oh, I don't have a job. I'll take a job in the bad industry. I'll you know, do I'll, I'll commit a crime because I'm hungry. I am feeling faint and weary. I'm at the point to die. What profit shall this birthright do to me? Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, rose up, went his way. Thus Esau, 
despised his birthright. Now, what's our birthright? Our birthright is we get to go to heaven. We get eternal life. The test is what happens when we become faint. We become tired of all the hardship in our life. And we want to sell God out, you know. Oh, look, there's an, another woman over there, you know, younger than my wife. Let's run off. Why don't I work, you know, work for this uh, gambling company? You know, it's, I need a job. I just need any job. I just, it doesn't work like that. Why don't I help my friends rob this bank? You know, I could do with that money. I'm hungry. And that's the test in life. Now, this bowl of lentils, honestly, to sell out your birthright for that, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It's the slightest testing. Let's look how Jesus faced the same test. Let's watch. So he was hungry for one day, right? Let's look at Jesus, how Jesus handles the same. Like, times that temptation by a thousand, and maybe you'll get close. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So the temptation from the devil comes, no matter what you do. Okay? Jesus walks into the temptation. He's not, he's not scared of the temptation. I walk into it. Right, it's time for my testing. And he walks in there. And notice, he walks into the wilderness alone. No one to help him. He does it deliberately. And when he had fasted 40 days, remember, uh, Esau was hungry for one day. He felt faint and he sold his birthright out. 40 days. And he was hungry. No, he was hungry. Of course, 40 days. And what do you see? The same temptation times a million. What does Jesus do in the same situation? Remember, he was offered bread and pottage. When the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. So it's just bread. The other guy sold that for bread and lentils. <laughs> okay? Just bread. But he answered and said, Man shall not live by bread alone. That's the takeaway. That's the message. You don't sell out for bread. You don't sell out for money. You don't do it. But by every word that proceedeth out the mouth of God. Happy birthday, by the way. Blessings for you. <laughs> I know she's brought some stuff for us after. Okay. So, he uses the same example of Esau in the Bible. Okay? In Romans. Paul uses the same example. He says, even us who he has called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Okay? As he said in O.C., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. Now, I don't know why people cannot read. There are Christians out there. I understand. If someone didn't go to school, they don't know how to read. No problem. Good for you. I hope you learn, I hope you don't, but even if you do or don't, it's nothing to do with salvation. You don't have to read the Bible to get salvation. Okay, just believe. Morning. Hey, how are you? Good to see you, my brother. From the most famous Baptist church in the world. Hello. <laughs> okay. So, it's very simple here. The Bible doesn't get more clear. Jews and Gentiles. It differentiates the two. I have not only called the Jews. Now, how many times have people gone up to me and go, and the other day this happened to me. They said to me, no, 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 Jesus come just for the Jews. I was like, <laughs> do you get that in your church as well? Oh, no, you should see what happens over here. You should see it. So, Apparently, the whole Jesus thing was just for Jewish people. And I'm saying to them, guys, please, look, the Bible says something else. The, the Bible really says something else. So they said, but Gentile doesn't mean the word Gentile. 
It doesn't mean non-Jew. So I showed him the dictionary. Here, Gentile means non-Jew. See? It's in the dictionary. No. <laughs> so I'm facing this at the moment. Okay? Now, I, I face... Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> I, it's not this passage. There's like 30 passages that show it. Okay? And even in the Old Testament, it shows, and the Gentiles will come to your light and stuff like that. So it's all through the Bible. But in this situation, what do we see? They use the, the situation of Edom and they use Esau and uh, Isaac. So what do you see here? Jacob, sorry. What should we say then? that the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. Okay? The Gentiles will have faith. They will be better off. They've achieved more. And let me tell you something. It's harder to have faith. It is harder. It's harder to believe. Because sometimes people can't believe the there will be justice. They can't believe in eternal life. They can't believe that God will help them. But Israel followed after the law of righteousness, has not attained to the law of righteousness. How did that happen? Following laws, people will break laws. You will do something wrong. And I'm saying every single day. You come back to God, you have your faith, and that's it. And many people, they've called me and said, uh, Pastor Mario, I've fallen. I said, did you get back up? Did you ask God for forgiveness? Will you repent? Then don't worry about it. You see, many people stumble. I don't care about that, at the stumbling block. I care about when they get back up. And that's what that Sylvester Stallone meant in that speech that he put in Rocky. <laughs> that famous one that everyone, because he's blatantly come out as a Christian. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, as it were by the works of the law, they stumbled at the stumbling stone. In the title of the sermon, the stumbling stone, as it is written, behold, I lay in Zion, stumbling stone and a rock of offence. Whoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. What about those that don't? What about those that don't believe in him? They tripped up. That's the stumbling stone. I'll place it there. I'll put this stone there for a reason. If people are going to trip over it and not believe, that's their problem. But that's where they went wrong. Now, let's remember something. That Half the Jews believed in him, even half the Pharisees. It says it. Half of them, at the trial, half of them were on his side. It was the deciding vote of the leader. Remember what we showed at the beginning? That woman who's, who's in charge of Disney uh, as a leader, she says, you know, I need more queer characters, more queer content. It was terrible. She's supposed to be leading, but it's always the leaders that get corrupted. How does that work with Baptist churches? Well, Baptist churches have to be autonomous. They have to be independent. Why? Well, you avoid the corruption. You can't corrupt the leaders. Because if you corrupt the leader of every single Baptist church, that would take you forever. <laughs> it can't be done. You stay under the rain and there's nothing they can do. 20% of Christians are Baptists. There's just too many. Imagine 20% of the Christians on the planet. You cannot corrupt the churches. There's a, there's a corrupt organization called the Southern Baptists. And they are pure evil. They just stole the name Baptist. <laughs> okay? But in general, you know that you're okay. The doctrine's not the same at every Baptist church. There can be slight variations, but not salvation issues. The Trinity's fine, everything's fine, the Bible's fine. Usually a King James Bible, so you're safe. I don't think they can corrupt that much, but 
You see, so back to Obadiah. What happens here? For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, Esau had children. They became the Edomites. The Edomites started fighting with the Israelites, forgetting that they had the same. <laughs> they're the same. They came. They're the same family. It's, it, it is what it is. People, uh, when, when you get Arab countries that hate the Jews, they're forgetting they both came from, from Abraham. They just, it is what it is. For the violence against thy brother. Look at Satan's work. The, 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 the evilness and the cunningness that is the reason he needs to be destroyed and he will be. Okay, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. You will never inherit now because of what you've done. Your God has seen it. What did they do? In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into the gates, cast a lot of lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was as one of them. What's he saying? You stood on the other side. Let me tell you something. Me and my sister, we fight, we fight, we argue, we fight. What happens? At the time when I was in trouble, my sister was there for me. It doesn't matter. I mean, we've got two sisters here today. Okay? <laughs> you fight, yes? Yes, yes, you fight. But let me tell you something. How many times have you been there for each other? See, you don't get on, but you fight. My mum's here today at the back. We fight, <laughs> but we forget about it and get on with our lives because we, the need. And sometimes this need is created by God to keep you guys together, okay? So sometimes there's some bad stuff happens in your life, but it brings the brother and sister stuff together. Let me tell you something. When I was a, a, a rich guy, I had, you see, I've had poverty and wealth. I know how to be both, like Paul said. Okay, so I've had both. And when I was rich, I had just loads of friends. Friends. <laughs> Until I was wiped out financially. Remember that? It was like 12 years ago, something like that. Suddenly these friends dried up and disappeared. The tribulation was better for me. I got to see who my real friends were. Here. We have the opposite of what you have. They stood on the other side. while the, Remember the Babylonians took over? Okay? King of Babylon and stuff like that. They, these guys didn't try to help. It doesn't matter about your, your arguments. That's your brother and sister. And they stood back. And God saw it. Okay? So God cuts them off. You don't want to be part of Israel. Fine, that's how you want it. You'll be cut off forever because of what you did. You stood by it and all this stuff happened. You cast lots. Who gets Jerusalem? Great. Look, all our brothers and sisters have been captured. Okay? Isn't that great? Let's roll dice to see uh, who gets what when they're gone. This is how bad they were. Thou shoulder, you shouldn't not have looked on at the day uh, of thy brother, in the day that he became a stranger. Neither should thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither should thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Thou shouldest have looked at their affliction in the day of their calamity. And have laid hands on their substance in the day of calamity. Imagine someone so depraved that they watch their sister or their brother fall into poverty and laid hands. They stole what was left. When when Babylon took over uh, Israel righteously, right? They were, you know, Israel was very very evil at that time. Okay. But these lot, you know, stamped down on them worse. 
We're not going to help you. We're actually going to rob you when the Babylonians have gone. This is how bad they were. You spoke proudly. Ha ha, look at them being destroyed by the Babylonians. Isn't it great? What if I told you that this could happen to us? We rejoice too much when we see our enemies falling. When we shouldn't rejoice at all. It's very... I know I rejoiced when God punished my enemies. I rejoiced because I got to see justice in my life. But I never spoke proudly. Ha ha. Never mocked them in the street. Now I've been mocked when I've been beaten. I've been mocked. And what happens? I remember how it felt. So I remember I didn't do it to anyone else. Even though God has delivered so many of my enemies into my hands. It had to happen by miracle. So many times he saved me. So, if there's an enemy in your life and God delivers into your hands, don't speak proudly against them. See, I told you so. See, look what's happening to you. Don't make things worse. Neither should thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those that did escape. They didn't let their own people escape. They caught them. Their own people. He's talking about brothers and sisters now. <laughs> okay. You cut off those that did escape. Neither should thou have delivered them, delivered up those that did remain in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done to thee. And thy reward shall return upon your own head. Okay? Do you think I didn't see it, God is saying? <laughs> Do you think I didn't see it? Okay? I mean, this, for me, I can't... Imagine you, you watch your sister and your brother get delivered up to the forces, and some of them escape, and you stop them and hand them over to the people. I mean, that's just, it's like a, a Jewish person selling out a Jewish person during the Holocaust. You're sitting there, you're thinking, <laughs> how can you possibly do that? So when, some, when God cuts some people off, know that it's for a righteous reason. Sometimes the atheists in a debate, what would they do? The atheist will say, what about this part in the Bible? See? <laughs> God orders all of that place destroyed. Well, read the passage before where it says they had the plague. They won't read the passage before. They won't do that. They'll selectively pick parts of the Bible, but we study it and we see why did Eden need to be destroyed? Well, for this reason. God will write that wrong. So, as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Now what's God saying? You had the chance to drink on my holy mountain. You witnessed all these things, all God in your life. But because you didn't accept him and you did evil things, the heathen will drink continually, not you. Gentiles, non-Jewish people, they'll drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down. They'll accept my laws. They shall be as though they had not been heathen. These are things are predicted. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. I'm going to put things right. You see, there's a lot of people that had a chance. Now, a lot of people, some people, sorry, say to me, Mario, you're really hard on other preachers and other churches. And you're soft on sinners. You're soft on uh, non-believers. There's a reason for that, okay? There's a reason. Lost people don't know what they're doing wrong. They are heathen. 
Okay? But when they hear the word of God, they'll drink it down. They're just waiting for someone to tell them the word of God. Very easy to do. That man we baptised last week, he's from Afghanistan. Right? Considered heathen. But he came to me. I never offered him. He came to me and said, listen, I want to be baptised. I said to him, can you do it now? I said to him, now. Because the sea's cold. <laughs> right? So we set it, and I thought, all right then. Because some, some guy called me at 10.30 at night and said to me, I want to be baptised. Okay. Now I stopped watching my TV at night, got dressed, went down, baptised. That's what we do. There isn't a time for it. But those that did drink, you drunk upon my holy mountain. You heard the word of God. I don't forgive wayward priests and wayward churches because they drunk upon the holy mountain. They knew the word of God and yet they turned on it. They did evil knowing that God was God. And that I don't forgive. It's not a stumble. You knew that what you were doing was evil. So, give me a guy who has a repentant heart and wants to come to God. Now, when you baptize someone, what do you do? I said to him, do you accept Jesus Christ? Because people might ask you to baptize him. Do you accept Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe that he's the son of God? I do. Then let's go down to the water and get baptized. Exactly what it says in Acts 8.37. He says, there's water, the eunuch says to him, the Ethiopian guy. There's water. What's stopping me from getting baptized now? Nothing. But the other church told this Afghanistan guy that they, the Afghan guy, that he has to study with them for a year and then be baptized. Where does it say that in the Bible? <laughs> doesn't does it it doesn't say anything it says the opposite philip went up to him and right there and then the guy wanted to be baptized he said right let's do it i remember there was a 11 year old who said to me can i be baptized and i said no we we only do adult baptisms you remember that day and i regretted it ever since because then i read about samuel who was six <laughs> and came to god I will never, ever refuse anyone again. Because I said, oh, we have to talk to the parents. Yeah. I'm not doing that again. If someone wants to be baptised from now on, they get baptised. Mm -hmm. If they're old enough to ask to be baptised, that's it for me from now on. I'm thinking, how many sins can an 11-year-old know? <laughs> but all right, we'll wash them away as well. You know, maybe you stole someone's toy or something. You know, whatever it was. Sorry? That's it. Evan, uh, Evie, Evie. So we live and learn from stuff like that. So after that day, I remember, it was the same with the priests. There are priests that have approached me, um, and they're wavering. Priests. And you think, priests, they must have lots of faith. No. The devil goes after pastors the most. He's number one target in the church. <laughs> I know because I am one. <laughs> and people attack you all the time. Friends, family, people you trusted, people in the government, people in the police. They don't like you. The guy that was delivering Bibles to us, they're called Beams Bible Society. You've probably heard of it. Now, Beams Bible Society have been sending uh, Bibles here for 20 years to this church. 26 years to this church. What happened? When I went to the post office to pick up the Bibles, I opened them and, and said, oh, they're Bibles. They, they said, we've got a delivery. It was Bibles. They've just been sent just for no reason. I thought, great. I have some Bibles. The guy at the post office didn't like it because the woman next door said, who are these Bibles for? I said, we're a Baptist church. Here's a, a flyer. She said, can I come? I said, of course you can come. The guy didn't like it. Now, the Orthodox Church needs shaking up, but they're not bad people. They're not. I, I know loads of them, and I've sat with the top guys. The top guy in Limassol is down here. He's a famous guy. 
and I sat down and we had theological discussions for a very long time. Okay, I don't, they're not evil. But this guy was, if you're not orthodox, you're a heretic. I said, but there's, <laughs> there's seven churches in Revelation. I said, you can't say that one of them is uh, above the others. He said, you're a heretic. And then the next Bible delivery got delayed. He used his influence at the post office to send them back and then charge beams for sending. Now, sending something from America isn't cheap. And they were sending us Bibles for free. So this guy, put a, he stopped the word of God and they didn't deliver Bibles to us again. We had to buy those ones. Well, me and Marco, me and Marco bought those ones. But you see, that's what happened afterwards. They put... They did something to stop the word of God from going out. And it was wrong. Okay? There will be holiness. It doesn't matter what things people put in the way. There shall be deliverance. You cannot stop the word of God by selling out your brother and sister. There is nothing you can do. God doesn't need our help to spread the word. He appears to people. He does things. He doesn't need our help. What do we do? We show a token gratitude to God by reaching out. Now, morning, morning. Don't worry, we're just starting. <laughs> just killing time till you got here. Okay. So, for this situation, if you've got, um, I know you work, you guys, and you send money back home, right? What happens? Do the people at home, all you ask from them is, you know, do good in school. Do well in school and I'll give you this toy and this car and this thing. Your father's giving you gifts. Your parents give you gifts. But you haven't really earned them. And that's what grace is. Grace is hiding. It means I let you off. Okay, I'm giving you something from me for free. All I ask is a token gesture. You know, it's like we say, uh, do well in school and I'll, I'll send you on holiday. You haven't earned that holiday. All you've done is written out some numbers and studied a book. You haven't really earned it. And that's what Christianity is. We're going to get given something eternal life. No, it's not something you've earned. But we've made a token gesture to God by offering up our sins as a sacrifice. Hey, I do this sin, God. I'm not going to do it anymore. That's from me. It's one pence. And the debt is a billion. <laughs> but that's all I can pay you. So we do that. We preach out in the streets. Not because uh, God needs our help spreading the message. He can do that by himself. We do it to show a token one pence. Here, God, that's for you. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you for everything you've offered me. Let us pray. My Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you shake up the Christian hearts around the world. I pray for healing for the sicknesses that are going around. Put your healing hands down, Lord, for nothing is impossible for you. For those that have had word from doctors, oh, this thing can't be cured. Lord, lift down your healing hand upon that person. For nothing is impossible for you. Lord, bless the children around the world and keep them safe from all this evil that people are trying to brainwash them with. Let them grow up in the love of God. Lord, put down all these corrupt people in positions of power. Bring down these companies that push these things out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For those joining us online, God bless you. Oh, my tie was crooked for the whole sermon. Oh, well, I'm going to hear complaints about that. Bless you and see you next week. Have a blessed week. Bye-bye.